Hey, it's Dennis. Today I've got a little bit different type of video. Um, it is about the electrical trade, so... You know, uh, as we uh, work through our lives and our careers, we all um, acquire things. And I'm no different. I've acquired some things. The electrical industry has been very good to me. But uh, today I wanted to show you one of my most prized possessions. And here it is. It's this old hammer right here. One of my most valuable possessions. And um, this is a Hart California Framer and when I got this hammer it was brand new it was all shiny had a beautiful handle on it um, that was about somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 years ago and a friend gave me this so when I got into the electrical trade um, you know, I always thought that electrical hammers, you know, the ones with the long nose looked kind of goofy. And I wasn't having any of that. Um, and in addition to that, you know, when I hit something with my hammer, I wanted it to move. And so I carried a 28 ounce uh, Vaughn framing hammer. And... Uh, early on in my career, I went to work for a shop and I met a guy there who became a you know, lifelong friend. His name was Stephen Douglas Penwarden. And shortly after, uh, actually I think we became roommates before uh, I, I ended up working uh, with him. But we ended up working at the same shop. And... Um, Shortly after that, he was out one day, and I think, uh, I think it was uh, some guy on the side of the road was selling tools. And uh, he stopped in there, and he bought me this hammer, this beautiful, well, it was beautiful, uh, Hart California Framer. And um, I remember when he gave it to me, I was like, wow, I, you know, I, I really appreciated it. I was surprised and I thought, man, you know, he spent his own money to buy me, you know, this beautiful hammer. And it meant a lot to me. And I didn't want to, you know, damage it or ding it up because it was a special gift to me. And uh, so I put it in my toolbox. And a couple weeks later, you know, he stopped me and he said, Hey, where's that hammer I bought you? And I said, Well, I put it in my toolbox, you know. I don't want it getting banged up and stuff. I, you know, that's kind of special to me and I, I want to keep it nice. And he's like, I didn't buy you that hammer to put it in your toolbox. I bought it for you to use. You need to get it out of that toolbox and you need to start using it. And uh, so you can see that I have, uh, I've worn the claws off digging in the dirt. Um, you know, I've replaced the handle probably five times. You can see how many screws are in there trying to tighten the head before this handle finally broke. Worn the corrugation off of there. It's all smooth. I don't know how many fingernails I've lost to this hammer, smashing my hands, and I've even beat myself in the face with it, swinging up this way and missing and smacking myself right between the eyes. Cut myself here. Um, but I use this hammer. I use this hammer every day in the electrical trade for 18 years. And one day, I finally broke the ham handle off it again. See all the screws. 
and I thought, you know, started thinking how long I'd had that hammer <clears throat> and how much I used it. And uh, I remember at the time I decided it was 18 years I'd been using this hammer. And I thought, you know, uh, that's a long time and maybe it's time for a new hammer and maybe we should retire this one. But it was very special to me. And uh, so I didn't want to lose it. And I thought about it and I decided, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this back to Steve. And I'm going to tell him he needs to hang on to it for 18 years. And after that, he needs to give it back to me. So at the time I was in Colorado, he was still out in California. And uh, I had a trip planned there. So when I went out to California, I swung by his house. And uh, he wasn't home at the time when I popped in. And I didn't tell him I was coming. Uh, so he had a handrail on the decking up to his front door and I wrote him a note and I said, Hey, Holmes, we called each other Holmes. I said, Hey Holmes, I've had this hammer for 18 years. You, you know, you told me to use it and I have, and now I'm giving it back to you. And I want you to keep it for 18 years. And when those 18 years are up, I want it back. I set that note on his handrail. <clears throat> set this hammer on top of it and left it there. And uh, at the... Uh, I guess it was, I don't know, probably five years later. I was working in Kansas um, at a petrochemical plant and I was a um, maintenance manager and I got a call from his sister one day and she said you know I'm, I'm calling to let you know that um, Steve isn't well um, he's been having headaches and we took him into the doctor and we found out that he has a, you know, very aggressive brain cancer and he's not going to make it. And she said, I, I wanted to let you know as quick as possible because you may want to come out and see him, um, you know, before he passes. He's not going to have very long. Tomorrow we're taking him in. He's going to have a surgery, and they're going to try to remove as much of it as possible. And uh, so immediately I uh, schedule a flight to get out there to see him. And, um, you know, I, I was working at this petrochemical plant. There was a... Uh, the owner was a Palestinian guy, and I liked him a lot, but he was very uh, hot-headed. And, you know, he'd take me into his laboratory, and he'd show me his little beakers, and you see how this heats up here and goes through that coil and cools down, condenses and drips in there, and then I add this thing in there, then I heat it up, and all of this stuff and then he'd tell me you know now I want to build 2500 gallons of it so you know build this in my plant and the thing I was working on at the time was like a eight hour long controlled explosion it was a polymer uh, mix that he wanted to make and it uh, had to inject this catalyst into it. And every time the catalyst went in, it raised the temperature, you know, violently. And it had to be controlled, it had to be metered just the right amount of catalyst as the flow was going and mixing and cooling. And um, so I designed this skid for it to set on. It was a basically a two story platform. And, uh, 
I designed it by you know placing all of the equipment where I thought it needed to go and imagining the piping and the electrical and plumbing and everything and I didn't have a lot of room so it was kind of critical that everything fit in the right spot so I had this welder there that liked to change my designs a lot and uh, so I was on top of that guy uh, to say that I was uh, micromanaging managing him, that would be a good, uh, you know, assessment. Because I didn't want him changing anything. If he changed everything, it, it could screw up the whole design. I didn't even know if I could, you know, recover. And so that old chemist came in that morning that I was supposed to fly out. I came to work and I was going to fly out in the afternoon and... He came in and encountered the welder guy, and uh, so the welder guy, as usual, told him, You know, Gene, you know, I really think we need to change this over here and move this around here. What do you think about that? And, of course, Gene, he doesn't know anything about anything. And, uh, oh, sure, Mac, you know, if you think that's best, he's, Mac tells him, Well, you know, I'd like to do it, Gene, but... Dennis is micromanaging me, and he's not giving me any room to, you know, uh, improve this thing. And so uh, the owner came out and talked to me, basically chewed my ass for micromanaging Mac, and I tried to, you know, tell him why. And uh, But he was all hot-headed. He didn't want to hear any of it. And uh, later that afternoon, then I went and uh, got on the plane, flew out to California, and the next morning I went to the hospital to visit my friend um, and spent the day with him, spent several days with him. But uh, so, you know, when they did the operation to remove some cancer, they also removed part of his brain and you know, he recognized me, and he remembered every single thing we ever did together. I mean, we were roommates for years and friends for, you know, ever, and uh, we both rode motorcycles, both street bikes and dirt bikes, and, you know, in our youth, we were like, you know, all young men, I guess, kind of wild, and and uh, adventurous and uh, we just did a lot a lot of things together and he remembered every single one of them you know but he couldn't make one in one add up to two uh, and the thing that he was obsessing over was how why am I in this hospital and how am I going to get out of it and he kept asking me that, you know, well, you know, Holmes, um, uh, you know, you're a pretty sharp guy. You know, if you wanted to get out of this house hospital, you know, what would you do? How would you uh, go about that? Because, you know, I really want to get back to my house and, um, you know, I need your help to figure this thing out on how I'm going to get out of this hospital. And... At the time, I was literally holding his hand, and uh, you know, trying to comfort him, and just basically telling him, "Look, you know, the first thing you're going to have to do is you got to get up out of that bed, and you got to do some walking around. You got to build your strength, you know, and show these doctors that you're improving." Uh, you know, I knew he wasn't going to recover, but uh, I did. Uh, believe that, you know, eventually he, he would be able to go home and spend some, at least some time there, you know. So I'm holding his hand and we're having this conversation and he's trying to figure out how he's going to get out of the hospital. And my phone rings and it's basically my boss at the petrochemical plant was a lady and uh, her name was Charity. And so I took the call and went outside, and I said, yeah, you know, what's up? And so Charity tells me that, well, you know, Gene uh, is really upset over you ma micromanaging Mac the welder. 
Uh, and so he's decided that when you come back uh, from your trip, um, that you're not going to be the maintenance manager anymore. Uh, you're just going to be uh, the electrical supervisor. And this was one of Gene's tactics. He demoted people all the time and made them still do the their same job, but they didn't have the title, you know, and then pretty soon he'd put them back in charge or whatever. And uh, I said, well, you know, Charity, you are really uh, interrupting a very important moment for me. You know, I thought I'd let everyone know that, you know, this is a very special friend of mine. He's very sick. He's not doing well. I was literally holding his hand, you know, uh, trying to, you know, console him when you called me. And I don't have time for this nonsense right now. And she said, I know, I know, but you know how you know, Gene is, and, you know, he's going off, and, you know, I told me I had to get some kind of answer from you, and, and I said, well, I don't feel like answering that question right now, and I'm sorry, and she said, please, please, you got to tell me something to tell him, because if I don't tell him, you know, and I knew what she'd be going through, because he was a hothead, and he was on her now, instead of me, and and uh, the whole thing was making me angry because it was interrupting a very special moment with my friend. And, you know, for crying out loud, I come to work there every day and do everything you want. And I'm only asking for three days off to go console my friend who's dying. And, uh, and so I told her, I said, look, you know, if you have to tell him something, tell him this. Tell him Dennis Thomas said to F off. And I hung up the phone. And I went back in the hospital room and, you know, I, spared, I shared, you know, three days of special moments with my friend. And, uh, after that, I had to leave and go back to Kansas. But before I left, I knew Steve had this hammer. And uh, so I asked his girlfriend, I said, hey, you know, a little while back, you know, several years back, I left a hammer sitting on your handrail uh, to your house for Steve. And I know he has that in his office at your house will you please find it and give it to me before I leave I wasn't gonna leave without this hammer because I knew that once Steve passed you know I didn't know where his belongings would go but no one would recognize the value of this old beat-up hammer it has no value to anyone but me you know I mean, I've dug in the dirt with this thing for 18 years and worn the claws off. I've replaced the handle probably five times. You can see all the screws I put in there trying to tighten up this head, worn this thing almost smooth. Um, I use this hammer every day of my life for 18 years. And I wanted it back, and she found it for me, and she gave it to me. So, this is one of my most prized possessions. I hope I get buried with it. Uh, work is more than just money and, you know, elevating your career. Work is relationships and friendships. And so I wanted to make this video to recognize my friend, uh, Steve Penwarden. But I also wanted to make it to encourage you to do something like this for one of your friends at work. Buy them a hammer or some other tool and uh, 
encourage them to use it. And tell them, you know, 20 years from now, uh, when you've used that tool and it's worn, bent, broken, I want that tool back. I want that tool back from you. Um, cherish your time with those people because you never know, you know, how much time you have and when it's going to end. Okay, that's the video for today. Thank you guys.